Hello, I'm Ryan F9. This is a new motorcycle glove, and this is an old motorcycle glove. And today we find out how much safety you lose over time. Our test subjects are identical climb adventures. Same model, same colorway, same leather. Same $120 price tag, too. The only difference is this one is brand new, whereas this one has seen 20,000 kilometers and two years of service. Funny story, Clam always used to brag about how this Pittard's leather was water resistant, which might have been true if they hadn't turned around and poked a bunch of holes in it. The finger four shets and the top hand, they're all perforated and water resistant my ass. After 15 seconds under the mister, my left hand, the one in the old glove, was significantly more wet. So, it looks like we have indeed lost some waterproofing over the last two years. I expect puncture strength will also have changed with age. And we're gonna put a BB, a lead pellet, and a penetrating pellet into the palm and the pour on armored fingers of each glove. So looking at the palm of the new glove, it seems that the penetrating pellet went through the doubled up leather, while the BB and the lead pellet did not. Time to see if this glove can pull off the same trick after two years of use. So that's the exact same result, only the penetrating pellet went through. I'm a little bit surprised because I have worn this piece of leather noticeably thinner over time, but yeah, same puncture strength. Now it's time to test the puncture strength of the pour on armor. Taking a look at each glove, it appears only the penetrating pellet made it through the new glove. And same with the old one. Although the lead pellet did get very close to making it all the way through, but even still, only the penetrating pellet made it all the way through. Ergo, the puncture strength of pour on armor did not really degrade over time. And next on the chopping block is seam strength, through which I have a scissor spreader to slide into the pinky of each glove. And after that, we just count the cranks until we bust a seam. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine turns to break a panel apart on the old glove. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 turns to break the seam on the new glove. Unsurprisingly then, seam strength has gone down a little bit with age. Moving on to the knuckle armor test. Our method is a bit blunt. You put a 100G shock watch sticker underneath the knuckle padding, and then we just drop this bowling ball onto it from higher and higher heights until we see a failure. Now the armor itself is nowhere near as crude. It's fancy molecular stuff called Poron XRD. It feels like memory foam against your knuckles, but it can transition to a glass-like solid under high stress. Looks like we tripped the 100G sticker at a four foot drop height. Now time to see if the used motorcycle glove has the same impact resistance. Wow, we killed the 100Gs at half the drop height, only two feet. I'm a bit surprised because Poron returns to its original squishy consistency after each impact, it's supposed to retain its safety very well. It should be just as safe two years off the factory line as it is when it's new, but that wasn't the case we saw here. Abrasion resistance. With each twist of the wrist, I have been slowly wearing down this leather over time. At this point, I don't think there's that much left to grind through before the pavement starts biting my palms. So my 19 kilometer an hour 40 grit sandpaper got through the old glove in four seconds. Compare that to nine seconds on the new leather, and it seems that I've lost about five seconds of abrasion resistance over the last two years. You can kind of see how that would be the case, but what about the qualities you can't see like heat resistance? Now for all I know, my glove's heat resistance has evaporated into thin air since I bought it. My muffler is properly hot, and I can comfortably hold my hand there for seven seconds with the new glove. But after just four seconds in the old glove, I'm out. It's intolerably hot. And that means I lost some heat resistance somewhere down the road. And where there's heat, there is also fire. Fire on the leather, fire on the Poron XRD. Totally squishing up. 3M scotch light there. Go on the palm. 
This is the old glove, obviously. Yeah, it's curling up pretty good, but nothing sustaining or holding a burn. Can you try the new glove? Leather, boron, 3M Scotch Light. You know, this is definitely not squishing as up or squishing up as much as uh, as the old glove did. I would say that this is probably slightly better fire resistance by a hair, just based on how this visually looks. So, what have we learned? Now, Father Time does appear to eat away at the safety of motorcycle gear. In regards to the two-year-old climb adventures, we saw significant deterioration in waterproofing, seam strength, knuckle armor, abrasion heat, and fire resistance. Only puncture strength appears to have survived the ravages of time fairly well. So that's it for new versus old, but next week we have expensive versus cheap. And this is a Scorpion EXO R710, rider respected, Snell rated, fiberglass shelled, and priced just under $300, whereas this is the sketchiest thing we could find on eBay. 30 bucks, six weeks shipping from China, made by a company called AHP that even Google didn't know existed. If you're interested in seeing how much safety $30 will buy you, consider subscribing to our channel to see next week's video. Until then, thank you very much for watching. Take care.